Welcome to Space Vidcast, episode 28. Check that out. We're getting up there. Yep, for October 17th, 2008. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me is the beautiful, wonderful, talented, and very energetic Carrie Ann Higginbotham. <gasps> Bing! Wow, look at that. <laughs> you said very energetic, look at that. so I figured I should be really, because I wasn't feeling very energetic, but now that you said so, booyah! <laughs> We are the Space Vidcasters, and we're going to bring you the latest and greatest in space <laughs> news, space travel, and all that other fun jazz, all related around space, because, you know, why not? Well, because that's what we like. That's yeah. what we do. I, you know, earlier today, uh, when you were on TV for something completely unrelated, and we were in the green room, a woman, I, she said something about, like, oh, so what is your space, what is your vidcast about? And I said, it's about space, and she's like, oh, you mean, like, space for things and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, 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 like, space, like, space. <laughs> it and keeps I going Right, like, space. I didn't know how to say it. I'm like, like, outer space? <laughs> like, planets and stars and stuff? And finally she was like, oh! <laughs> now, hang on. It's I not felt stupid. I wasn't... Well, that's the thing. It was like, I didn't, how do I explain that to somebody? Because she's an older generation. I think generation. outer space works. Outer space. That was as close as I could get. I was just like, you know, like... Space. Well, I think, man. It, but I think it is. Re- <laughs> I think it is related to because that. For, so I'm on another show and I, <laughs> I do a technology segment on a local television station and I just kind of show them how to use cool tech. But I think that it all does relate because in one way or another, space travel pushes our technology forward, yeah. and we have space to thank for a very large majority of oh, the tech that we have today. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. while I'm making a little bit of a stretch there, it is related <laughs> to space mm, 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 to space fitcast. Right? No, no, so, no I, I know. No, it, just, it was funny. It was sort of like, uh, you know, like space. We have got an action-packed <laughs> epic sode for you today. Episode? Epic sode. What? Yes, and a few minutes ago we got a uh, notice that we'll be able to make an announcement a little bit later on in the Hot show. Hot off the presses. Hot off the presses. Literally five minutes before I press the record button. <laughs> it's going to be awesome, and we're going to make you sit through the first whole part of the show in order to hear the announcement. That's uh-huh. my way. That's my way of enticing you to watch uh-huh. the whole thing. That's my little happy dance. All right. Let's get started with some space news, shall we? Oh, yeah, space news. Space That's so- news. Space news. I, okay. I just did that. I know, but I, I wasn't ready, so I didn't do it with you. <laughs> Quasonics. At least Boom. I'm hoping that's how you say it. Quasonics. Like Quasar. Like Sonics. Like, ooh, Sonic sounds really good. Anyway, sorry. Totally random. Quasonics, LLC, has developed a high-performance aeronautical telemetry system and that has they've been announced today that they have a contract, a fixed price contract, as they say, with our very own lovely good friends of ours, SpaceX. We like SpaceX. We do. We really like SpaceX. The thing is that uh, it's they're going to provide the telemetry transmitters and receivers uh, in support telemetry. of... Telemetry. What did I say? Telemetry. Oh, telemetry. There you go. It's like photography or photography? I guess so. Keep okay. going. Yep. Anyway, sorry. For the the uh, transmitters and receivers for Falcon 9, which is kind of what you're looking at. I gave you some pictures of Falcon 9 slash Dragon uh, because that's what it's going to be a part of. The telemetry? Telemetry? <laughs> telemetry. Telemetry. <laughs> I'm so bad at this, you guys. <laughs> Telemetry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you should see him. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm like, you should see him. His head's, like, down right now. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> those going. things, that's what they make I feel stupid now. So Falcon 9, for those who don't know, <laughs> is the next generation spacecraft from SpaceX. <laughs> SpaceX just had a re- fairly recently a successful launch of their Falcon 1. The big difference between the Falcon 1 and the Falcon 9, Falcon 1 has one Merlin engine. Guess mm-hmm. how many the Falcon 9 has? Four. Nine Merlin <laughs> engines. You should have seen his face. That was hysterical. You know, there something in the air tonight. I, we've got the, the space vidcasters in the chat room <laughs> hopped up on sugar. You are just like going off the wall. There's, there's nine of them. Wow. Whoa. That's crazy. <laughs> Man. All right. Let's just move on before this goes uh, too much further. <laughs> too much Oh, and by the way, somebody had pointed out that the uh, Falcon 9 maiden launches for the fourth quarter of 2008, which hopefully is any day now, because we are in the fourth quarter of 2008, <laughs> so any moment would be great. All right, Hubble. Okay, Ooh. so Hubble. Uh, we were supposed to have STS-125 earlier, uh, actually right around this time or so, and we don't have STS-125 going up in the air because Hubble had a boo-boo. 
But we think we've got side B up now for Hubble. That's supposed to be up and running and all happy-go-lucky, thanks to our engineers down here on Earth. And uh, everything should be a go. So we should be able to get 125 up ASAP because Hubble is up and going. All of that other fun stuff, just like we went over a couple of episodes ago about this over here and that over here and 119 and all that other mm -hmm. crap. Hopefully, we'll be able to make it up as soon as possible now that we have Hubble kind of making some making some progress. Right. As so that were. side A, side B thing, for those who don't know, there are two sides mm -hmm. to the Hubble telescope from a transmitting standpoint. This is the main piece of equipment that makes everything go to Earth, right? Yes. And uh, I'm sorry. I was, you said there's two sides, and I was like, there's two sides to everything. I'm in one of those moods tonight, wow. you guys. I know. I'll just and be keep quiet. Side A is the side that they had <laughs> used the entire life of the Hubble. They mm -hmm. never powered up side B in space. They had right. powered it up on the ground. But they never tested it in space, so it had been sitting up there for, how, how old is it, 10, 15 years old now? Something like that. Uh, so it's been sitting up there for a very long time, and, you know, when things sit in space for an extremely long time, they don't necessarily always work when you bring them back online. Right. Uh, as Carbon is pointing out, uh, 125, so far right now, we're, we're looking at February, right. which is nice. Well, it has a no earlier than February, so it cannot launch before February. Right, so it won't be in January, but that means we're talking like April-ish, probably like we... Uh, you know, we should make a net one of our TLAs. Oh, we should, but we that's will. not what it's going to be for today. Yeah, that's right. So, STS-125 was Space Shuttle Atlantis, which is OV-104. Yes. Do you like that? is scheduled for no earlier than February. It's going to go in uh, right before STS-119, I believe. Basically, they're going to put Discovery on pad 39B, move Atlantis to 39A, and use Discovery as the launch-on-need vehicle, just in case something goes wrong. Now, it was originally slated to be Endeavor, but they're moving Space Shuttle Atlantis back to the Vehicle Assembly Building, taking right. Endeavor off of pad 39B, moving it to 39A. It's the Space Shuttle Shuffle. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Yep. And I thought I was the only funny one. <laughs> International <laughs> Space Station, boom! All right, so Space Station, uh, International Space Station, is getting a renovation. It is going from a cramped three-bedroom, one-bath <laughs> to a spacious six-bedroom, two-bath. Is this, uh, this going to be on one of the MLSs? So it's, going like for, <laughs> right, it's going from a cramped apartment to a spacious condo. No, uh... <laughs> Um, but they are, I mean, I think that's a big deal. They're doubling in size. They apparently are getting also um, three new lab spaces, a walk-in closet, and a back porch. No <laughs> back porch? I swear to God, that's what it said. <laughs> <laughs> if I can find the MLS number for you, I will put that in the show notes. <laughs> that would be aw I almost want to put a gag MLS <laughs> Wouldn't that be there? awesome? That's, you know, just become an agent just so How I can get into the MLS. How many of millions of dollars would you... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, well, yeah, it'd be, bill it'd be like a hundred billion dollars. <laughs> like and it, it would be cozy, six bedroom, <laughs> two bath. Features, no gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Walk-in closet, back porch, <laughs> lovely view. <laughs> oh, stunning view. Stunning view. Stunning view. Out of this world view. <laughs> oh, <there you laughs> oh, I win. <laughs> oh man. All right, I'm sorry, but I thought that that was that was a really big deal. Uh, they have fixed the the toilet. The because, potty. Right. Cause again. The, again, the potty did go out again. I know we didn't do a a, a you know segment on it like we probably should have but it wasn't as big of a deal this time you know we need to have it like an international space station potty minute a potty Every, watch a potty watch <laughs> exactly we need to have the potty watch zero space... days since potty has been <laughs> exactly. broken <laughs> exactly that's exactly <laughs> we need to have like a potty meter on the right side of that space Midcast awesome. and all uh, and you know just kind of all of a sudden boom you know man <laughs> man this is just we should just start over this is going bad no i'm just right. kidding um so in any case so the potty Broke, they fixed it, broke again, they fixed it again. Now they'll have two potties, so in case one breaks, they can just use the other one. <laughs> or so we hope. <laughs> so the way they were able to fix the potty is that they launched the Soyuz TMA-13 yes. Expedition 18. Yes. And, Keep uh, that straight, would you? Yeah, well, I know. It's always, there's so many things 18, that go 13, with 12. Yeah, exactly. 92. So we have, uh, if you didn't watch the launch coverage live with us, first, uh, shame on you. Wait a minute. Two o'clock in the morning, at least in our particular time zone. Well, I was awake. Yeah, well, there's a reason for that. Because I like walk rocket launches. <laughs> yes, Come on, they're exactly. Cool. <laughs> you got to be right there with the rocket launches. <laughs> so we did cover this live, but for we those did. who missed it, uh, it was available on our YouTube channel, the full 
one hour and twenty minute video cast, but we're not gonna we're not gonna make you watch a full hour twenty. We do have a quick snippet. So here you go. Here is the Soyuz rocket launch it's that occurred pretty. Uh, about a week ago. Yeah. Here you go. T minus fifteen seconds. Off. The second umbilical tower moves away from the Soyuz. Preliminary. Preliminary. T minus five, four, three, two, one. You terminated. Prime and lift off. First stage okay. engines should be at flight speed now. Lift off. Lift off of the Soyuz rocket transporting Mike Fink, Yuri Lonchikov, and Richard Garriott to their home in space. 20 seconds. Engine of stage one, stages one and two operate nominally. Engines one and two operating nominally. Uh, launch structural parameters are nominal. Copy. Good roll and pitch program according to flight controllers. Soyuz is heading toward a link up with the International Space Station two days from now. Good first stage performance. The Soyuz delivering 102 pounds of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. First stage of the Soyuz is 68 feet in length, 24 feet in diameter as it burns for the first two minutes and six seconds of flight. 60 seconds. Pitch your roll nominal. Copy. 70. One minute into the flight of the Soyuz, everything nominal. Copy. Velocity is 1,100 miles an hour or 500 meters per second. 80 seconds. Nominal flight. Ninety seconds. Nominal. Flight. Engines of stages one and two operate nominally and stable. So if you want to watch the rest of the launch, you can do so by going to our YouTube channel where you can actually watch the entire thing at a fairly high resolution at spacevidcast.com. i got to tell you, the, the Russian translator, the, the lady, is probably, <laughs> probably our favorite announcer ever. She's so Russian. <laughs> Nominal. <laughs> she's, engine, but she's a translator. Engine, I mean, come on. Night. <laughs> she's she's getting the words one way, and she's translating them. I mean, how exciting can that job possibly be? It, that's true. Well, that's true. But it's also fun because she translates everyone. So whenever they do like an EVA, sometimes and it there like are she's two or three people herself? talking, she translates everyone's. Oh, did you get it? Yes, I did. <laughs> You're like, all right, right on, Chica. It, it makes actually for interesting. Space it's watching very funny. because you're watching it and you just you can't you can't tear yourself away. It's it's like grab this. Which one? Do yes, I got, I got it. Okay, good. <laughs> like oh man, um, I just wanted to say really quickly one of the other really cool things besides that Soyuz is a rocket and it launched and it got into space and yep. you know nothing bad happened. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, Richard Garriott uh, is our second. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Space. Uh, vacationer what's the word i'm looking for private citizen sure that'll work and one of the really cool things about him besides that he's so cool that he got to go into space and everything is that his father owen is a former u.s astronaut glxp tourist thank you tourist that's the word i wanted this is why we have the live chat room thank you for so all those words, words that i don't know oh yeah all space person. Thank you, Gooey. That's fantastic. <laughs> yes, yeah, space person. Space tourist. Yep. What tourist. A- that's the one I wanted. Thank you, GLXP. Um, in any case, so it, I just, I thought that was cool. I mean, he's the first astronaut to essentially watch his kid follow in his footsteps. Hmm. Right? I mean, it may not be through the same exact yep. footsteps, but I, I think that's very cool. Absolutely. And you know, did you also know that if you want, if you have a cool $100 million laying around. Oh, I do. Just, you know, burning a hole in your back pocket. Oh, yeah. And you want to fly around the moon. Who wouldn't? Well, I want to. (laughs) You can do so through space adventures. Yes. They've got the $100 million let's go around the moon uh, program thing going on. (laughs) Package. I believe it's spaceadventures.com. Is that like a B&B package? Yeah. You know, I don't think it's going to be. Yeah. I, I don't. 
<laughs> I think you need to really think that one through, though, because... Sling around the moon. Yeah. We have fresh cookies. Well, it's going to be, what is it, three days Three days there, <laughs> three days back. But remember, there are no potties on these, so you can't just borrow the one from the ISS. It's not a portable potty. Darn. So, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Don't drink a lot while you're there. No. Gotcha. Just, just a thought. Just pointing <laughs> that out. Hopefully, Virgin Galactic will actually come up with a space-faring vehicle that has potties on board that will allow tourists to go around the moon and eventually land on the moon and visit our lunar colony. You know what? So, I don't want to be... Well, yeah, our lunar uh, thank colony. Thank you, Carbon, for the link. So everyone that's watching... Uh, Higginbothamville. $100, $100 million per seat. Right. Yeah. I want to be... Uh, we were just watching uh, 2001 the other day. I want to be the stewardess. With the uh, shoes? Yeah, the little sticky watch. shoes. Yep. That's what I want to be. So the Soy is launched, and two days later, they docked with the International Space Station. So here you go. Here's oh, some, this is awesome, you guys. Here's some docking footage. The target is moving somewhat to the right, downward. The approach is... Ten meters away. Flight controller standing by for contact and capture of the International Space Station. The target is back in the middle. In the middle, we have capture, we have indicated the Docking confirmed. Capture. Copy. What? The International Space Station now in free drift. To prevent any inadvertent jet thruster firings, docking occurring over Kazakhstan earlier than had been planned at 3.26 a.m. Central Time, 12.26 p.m. Moscow Time. So, new residents have now arrived at the International Space Station. Mike Fink returning uh, to what was his home for six months, four years ago during Expedition 9, when he was the flight engineer along with his, his commander, Gennady Padalka. Fink now the Expedition 18 commander, arriving with Soyuz commander and flight engineer Yuri Lanchikov and U.S. space flight participant Richard Garriott, who will spend 10 days on the International Space Station. Now the opening of the hatch between the two crews, the hatch opening marked right on time at 4.55 a.m. Central Time, 1.55 p.m. Moscow time. You see Mike Fink uh, entering the International Space Station. Yuri Lanchikov as well, all three crew members now having joined their Expedition 17 counterparts. All six crew members now on board the International Space Station. And there you see Richard Garriott, the spaceflight participant, arriving on board the complex. The uh, crews will move back into the uh, Russian segment of the International Space Station to set up for congratulatory phone calls from the host of VIPs that are on hand here in Korolyov, outside of Moscow. So there you have it, uh, you know, docking and uh, hatch opening for the, for the capsule. And what's really interesting, for those who don't know, they're f basically f flying at 17,500 miles per hour and then slamming those two vehicles into each other. And it's slamming. Slam. Well, I mean, yeah, you saw it, right? <laughs> and you call it boom, boom, boom. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, kind of. Uh, so they, they, you know dock the the capsule to the international space station and the iss it's getting pulled back into earth's gravity so they mm -hmm. have thrusters on it to kind of keep it in a stable right. orbit they have to shut all of that down because you don't want to start docking and have the iss go <laughs> Chink! <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad that would be awesome <laughs> so yeah I mean, they're going at seventeen thousand five hundred miles per hour with the iss free drifting they have to go boom right into it so a pretty impressive maneuver no matter what i mean space shuttle all of it it's, it's just yeah impressive. well the thing is that it's it looks like it's relatively slow and so it, it looks like it's not as big of a deal but yeah when you you put it in those terms it's scary yeah and actually as carbon uh carbon mentioned it is a lot harder and faster than what the space shuttle does to dock with the iss yes so when we return we're gonna have some interesting fun and awesome news regarding space vidcast and an event upcoming so we'll christmas possibly possibly it's like an early christmas <gasps> Yay! stay with us we'll be right back
go. Here's our TLA for TLA? the TLA. I know we actually what? have a TLA this week. Can you believe it? That's like from I don't even know. Wow. Ten months ago or something. <laughs> so here's our TLA. What is a CSM? Anybody? Anybody. No, CSM, TLA no? doesn't equal CSM. <laughs> All right, first of all, TLA, for those of you who don't know, is a three-letter acronym, as it were. We do have a picture of the CSM right there, so that should help you at least a little bit. There we go. The command <laughs> and service module. Woohoo! Jeez. Ooh, that was For nice. the Apollo aircraft. Or aircraft, spacecraft. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It went through the air. Shut up. <laughs> Nobody asked you. <laughs> oh, man. We're, we're just slap happy tonight. I know. Well, that's because we're excited because uh, we're not going to be on the air next week. Why is that? Oh, my goodness. We're not going to be on the air. What's wrong? Why are we excited about not being on the air? Yeah, why are... Well... Because it's like a day off. Yeah, what, pretty much. What, that's what that means. <laughs> uh, which is true. We are not going to be broadcasting next Thursday. Actually, we got like a 50-50 chance of doing next Thursday. We may, but when we do broadcast next Thursday, we will be without our red chairs. We will be without our red chairs. We're going to be in... Actually, what state is it in? New Mexico, as opposed to Old Mexico, which mm -hmm. is where Ed lives. The... Lunar Lander Challenge from the X-Prize is back on. We just got word several minutes before the show that actually it is going to occur. It will be on the same dates as before, which are the, uh, what is that, the 24th and 25th Correct. Of, of October. October. And you can watch the entire event right here live on spacevidcast.com. In fact, GLXP in our room has got a great link there for you. Absolutely. So space.xprize.org, which by the way, just go there randomly at any time. Uh, just go anyway. It's just a, it's just a great it's thing. It's a cool place. Check up on the Lunar Lander Challenge, the Google Lunar X Prize. They've got a couple others going on as well. They've got a Progressive Challenge, not at the space site, but they've got Progressive. And then they've also got uh, the Ansari X Prize, which is the the more famous X Prize that ended up one way or another leading to Virgin Galactic. Oh, okay, Mike. So that is going to be uh, having the webcast at space.xprize.org as well. Yep, absolutely. Yay! So we will be covering the entire mm -hmm. event live, top to bottom, and Thursday is our travel day. Now, we're going to try to attempt to come back to you and do a show later that night. Uh, so if you know we get we fly in, we don't land until 9:40 our time, which is 2:40 a.m. coordinated universal time. Right. So we don't even we don't even land until after the show would have normally gone live, and then it's about an hour drive. Right. And so it's, it's at night, so I don't think we can stream from the car. Right, because there's not going to be any light. But we're going like to try to we're going to try to do something because we're going to be all <laughs> stoked and excited and, and ready to go. So we're going to do something that night, most likely. It may be a shorter show, but we're gonna we'll, we'll Twitter it out. So make sure to follow us on Twitter, which is twitter.com/spacevidcast. You yep. can also follow Google Lunar X Prize uh, GLXP at twitter.com/glxp. Um, and I don't know if they have a LLC Twitter account. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, you can also follow William Pomerantz. And, you know, we'll put all of these links in the show notes for the yes, show. Yes, absolutely. So you can actually see what's going on at that point. So we're really excited about that. We're and as excited. such, we have got this neat little promo video. So Yay! here you go. Check it out. NASA is currently looking to go back to the moon for the first time since human beings left towards the end of 1972. The job has been done before, but now we're looking to do it again, better, more frequently, and really to go back to stay. If NASA hopes to do that on a relatively fixed budget, they're going to need to really engage the private industry and the entrepreneurial community to make sure it can be done in an economically sustainable way. And that's the reason why they've offered this prize, as a first step towards building that industry support that's ultimately going to enable us to get back to the moon. The Luna Landa Challenge, I think, has been a terrific way of leveraging uh, what's a very small amount of money by, yeah, by aerospace standards, you get a phenomenal amount of progress from it. We, I'm, I'm confident that we wouldn't have had the, uh, the NASA contract if we hadn't been a Lunar Lander Challenge competitor. So we've just wrapped up the first 2008 Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge Team Summit. Over the past day and a half, our teams all gave us technical presentations, some status updates, we hashed out some important details about the event, and we had a chance for the teams to go out to the pad zones themselves and really get a feel for what the racetrack was going to look like. It was wonderful watching our teams interact with each other uh, and with our staff and FAA. It's really encouraging for all of us to see not only how far our teams have come, 
but the level to which they're willing to help themselves and help each other, uh, the fact that they're all pursuing a common goal with such a, an incredible amount of passion. You know, to me, I really don't even see them as competitors. You know, it's kind of like we're all trying to get to the end. You know, it's a very friendly competition. Uh, you know, we're all very competitive, but uh, it's, it's not done in a cutthroat manner. And, um, you know, all of the teams are, uh, you know, tend to um, cooperate and help each other when necessary. I hope you'll join us and, and watch the event. Uh, please visit us online at space.xprize.org. And there you have it. Yay! Absolutely. We're excited. It's going to oh, be fun. I'm so excited, uh, as, you like, guys. as I mentioned, nine teams competing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, last year was a little bit different. I think there was only one team able to actually compete. Right. And uh, this year, I think a lot more are going to actually be competing and actually... Um, yeah. We can't wait to be there. I can't yeah, even gonna, tell you how excited we are. It's gonna be it's gonna be a ton of fun, mm. and you know I think we've got all of our ducks in a row. We've been planning this out for the last uh, last few days at least. Uh, so it's it's uh, like hardcore. Yeah. Like, well, it came back on really quick. Pretty much you know? like twenty four seven. We've been like trying to figure out how yep. to do this, that, and the other. Um, one of the things that we're we're looking at if we, should we go on uh, Thursday night? I'm kind of hoping to maybe get somebody like Mike maybe i don't know on so we can kind of do some interviews with somebody else as well somebody who's involved um is kind of what i personally am hoping for i get to you know that kind of thing but that's what we're hoping for that's what we're we're doing that's what we're excited about and i'm so glad we are able to talk about it um yay he says sure sweet because then we you know then we can meet in person and all that other fun stuff uh in any case so we're very excited about it we're uh <laughs> Gooey's busy. Um, we're we're just pumped. I mean, I, I. Well, it goes to the heart of what we do, right? So we're we're huge advocates of privatized space travel and pushing the human race back out into exploring the stars. And uh, you know, even as their slogan, what is it? Revolution through competition, or uh, however however that works out. Um, it, it really is a great idea, and uh, we've said so before in the past, even before this event, and. Um, uh, we continue to think that, so we're excited to see what actually happens and uh, who wins this and what it will lead to in the future. Because fundamentally what we're looking at is the foundation work for something great for us going back to the moon one way or another. This be is either history with robots being made. Or I don't think we've actually sent a rover to the moon <clears throat> and actually landed on the moon since 1978. Someone may need to correct me on that. Right, yeah, but it's something sure. along those lines. So it's it's been a while since we've been to the moon. And now we've sent satellites there, but we, we haven't actually landed. So it's, it's time to get back there. It's our nearest... It's our nearest neighbor, and um, it's, it's time to buddy. do something with it. Yeah, buddy, a pal, little brother. Yeah, <laughs> and it really comes down to my vision of, you know, someday I want this show to broadcast from the moon, and in order to do that, we have to have humans on the moon. But before we can put humans on the moon, we need to be able to send uh, robots to the moon and right. actually scope things out and figure out what we're going to do. Baby steps, right? You don't want to just do it all there. I'm sorry, 1972 inverted my two and my eight. So 1972 is when the last last time we landed something. Oh, GLXP is saying 1973. So 72, 73, right in there. Okay. But, but much earlier than. Thank you. There you go. So stay with stay with the program. You know, we'll send out a lot of Twitters. Make sure to join us on Twitter. We'll tweet you out. We're gonna have a lot of interviews during the Lunar Lander Challenge. We're gonna bring in fascinating people. We're gonna bring in people who are trying to compete and and win and make this all go. We're gonna bring in you know people in the industry and actually really make a great dynamic show for you i think it's going to be we're gonna a pick ton their of brains fun. absolutely we're going to pick their brains it's going to be a boatload of fun and it's going to be live right here on spacevidcast.com and on space.xprize.org well and the best part i think is that we still are keeping lots of information out there a lot of people that um you know are, are going to have questions and stuff like that but uh, we're going to try and compile as many things as we can to, to for these interviews. So if there's something that you guys are just really, really uh, interested in that maybe we're not covering or maybe we wouldn't think of or something like that, make sure you get that kind of information to us and we'll try and keep this, uh, this all open. Yeah, we're all about the community aspect of it. We want to make sure that uh, you guys, uh, we, we contact you guys and we, we do it all in real time and you guys have your chance to voice your word. So yeah. There you have it.
Yay! Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next week from the Lunar Lander Challenge.